Okay, so this has been a long time coming, honestly. It's going to be a step-by-step, section-by-section uh, lesson on Gary Moore's famous intro to separate ways on the Live Blues video. Now, let's get straight into it. Right, so here's the first part. Okay, lovely little chord on the end there. So the first part here, uh, if we're in the key of B minor, basically, it's a ninth fret on the D, 7th fret on the G, and then we bend up twice on the ninth fret of the G. First one we cut off, and the second one we bend up with vibrato. And really hold it there. Let the sustain happen, you know? And then we have this lovely chord here. It's like a minor chord for the B minor on the 7th fret of the um, high E, B, and G, but then we're using the little finger here for the 11th fret on the D. Yep. Lovely. Alright, next section. Right. So this first part is a 9th fret on the D, 7th fret on the B. Let those notes bleed in a little bit if you want. And then 10th fret on the B, okay? And twice on the 7th fret of the B, first note you cut it off, second note hold it with some vibrato. Just delicate vibrato, okay? And then the chord that we play there is this. Now you want to use your thumb here. There's a couple of ways of playing this. Thumb on the 5th fret of the low E. And then you also want to use that to kind of mute the A string underneath. Then we have uh, fifth fret on the D, sixth fret on the um, G, second finger, and then finally on the B, seventh fret. You can either use your third finger or pinky. I tend to just go with my pinky here. But again, I'll play it like this. All right, next section. Okay, so the first part here, we're going to start with the 4th fret on the G, 3rd fret on the B. Then we slide 3rd finger from 3rd to 5th on the B, pull off to the 3rd. Okay. And then 4th fret on the G, add some delicate vibrato again. Then we have this. So this chord here is basically the same as the one we played previously with our thumb on the... Um, 5th fret of the low E, but now it's on the 3rd fret, okay? Thumb on the 3rd fret, low E, 1st finger, 3rd fret of the D, 2nd finger, 4th fret of the G, and then pinky, barring on the 5th fret of the B and high E. But play them like this. So you play the 3rd fret on the low E first, and then the rest. Okay? Next part, which is... 2nd fret on the G, and then 4th on the uh, D. And then it's 2nd fret again. You want to hold this note for a while, and then slowly bend it up like a blues curl. Like that. And then we slide from the 4th fret on the D to the 2nd. But I make the 4th fret a ghost note. Don't really want to sound that 4th fret out too much. Just kind of slide right into the 2nd fret. Then add some vibrato, just like that. Okay. Okay, this next section is going to sound the same as the first part, except we're going to add in unison bending. It'll sound like this. Okay, so 9 on the D, 7 on the G. And then two bends on the ninth fret of the G. First one a short bend, second one a long held bend with vibrato again. But as we do those bends, we're actually going to play with the first finger on the seventh fret of the B as well and play both the strings. You get almost like a chorusy sound when you add vibrato to that. Okay, and then we have that chord again that we played at the very start. We've already gone through that one. Then the next section. Okay, let's play that again. Basically, that is. A little bit different to the way we played it on the uh, in the second section. This one is ninth fret 
on the D, and then a seventh fret on the G this time instead of the B, and then a tenth on the on the B. Then again we'll do those two bends. Then we have that, and then we have this chord. Okay, so same as we played at the second on the second section with our thumb on the uh, fifth fret of the low E. But then we have first finger, uh, fifth fret of the D, second finger, sixth fret of the G, and then a little finger barring the seventh fret of both the B and high E. The difference with this chord is that we're adding the high E in. Okay. All right. So the next section. So we have the seventh fret of the B and high E. First finger, you can kind of roll that. Then ninth fret on the high E. And then play that ninth fret again, bend up a semitone, and then back down and pull off to the seventh fret. And then the sixth fret of the B, add some vibrato. Lovely little note. And then we have this chord, which we've already gone over. It's a thumb on the third on the E, uh, first finger on the third on the D, second finger fourth on the G, and then your pinky on the fifth fret of the B and high E. All right, so the next section. Alright, so this next section is the most difficult so far because of the fast scale run. It's not just because of the scale run, it's how we have to end it, and it's a little bit awkward. You'll see what I mean. I had to practice this a fair bit between the last section and this, but let's get straight into it. It's an up, down, fifth fret, and a high E and B. Cut the notes off, just like that. Leave a gap, and then go, which is the third fret on the high E there. A little bit of vibrato. And then we go, which is a quick hammer on from the second to third to second. Hammer on, pull off on the... Um, high E, and then downstroke on the 5th fret and the B, and then upstroke on the high E 2nd fret. At least that's how I play it. This leads us into this scale run, okay? Now you'll see something at the end which is a bit weird, but we go like this. Alright, we're ending on the thumb on the 2nd fret of the low E. The reason why is it leads us into a chord that, that note is the start of, and you can't really play this chord unless you're using your thumb on the low E. If you try using your first finger or something, it's, uh, I mean, I guess you maybe you could play it, but it's going to be very awkward. Right, so the scale run is actually um, like this. So it starts on the downstroke, and you can feel free to use different fingers than I do. I actually play it with the same fingers that Gary Moore does. It, I guess it just feels comfortable for us this way. But anyway, it's 5-3-2 on the B, down, up, down, and it's up, down, 4-2 on the G, and up, down, up, and this time it's... 5, 4, 2 on the uh, D. Right? Then down, up, down, 5, 4, 2 on the A. And then up, down, up, 5, 3, 2 on the low E. Remember to end on that thumb there. So just practice maybe the last three notes getting used to that, right? And see how you can get it you know, nice and comfortable. But that last note ends up um, with this chord here. It's so weird, man. Now basically what I'm doing, we start off obviously second fret on the low E, then I use my first finger on the second fret of the D here. I'm also borrowing it across the se uh, second fret of the G, but I don't really play the G, it's just the uh, D really. And then I use my second finger on the third fret of the B, and then stretch out my pinky finger as much as I can to the fifth fret here. Okay? And that's the notes that uh, Gary actually uses, so it's kind of weird. Bit of a stretch. Um, you might have to flex your hands a little bit before you can get that. But you know, try playing it without your thumb and see how difficult that is. All right, let's go. Okay, back to the more delicate little sections here. Okay, that section here is 7th on the B in high E, and then 10th on the high E, then vibrato on the 9th fret of the high E. Then we have this um, uh, E minor 7 chord, starting off with a low E open, and then the rest of it. Okay, so it's playing every string one by one. So we've got low E open, then A 7th fret, D 9th fret, G 7th fret, 
B 8th fret and high E on the 10th, okay? And after that we have... Right? So what that is, again it's similar to the part we did before where we went... Which is 7th on the B and high E and then the 10th on the high E. Then we slide into the 9th fret on the high E and pull off to the 7th, but make sure you add a little bit of vibrato to that 9th fret. Just like that. And then it's 7th fret on the B. So you're kind of borrowing your first finger there and rolling it. And then we have this double bend here. You bend up and down, and then back up, okay? On that second bend, you then want to fade in your volume now, okay? Gary Moore had a little bit more gain set on his amp, so obviously a little bit more exaggerated, but that's all that is. It's just a full tone bend on the 9th fret of the G twice. Bend up, down, up, and then fade in the volume. Um, then we have this little lick here. Okay, so 9 on the D, 7 on the G. And then a quick uh, little slide here and cut off from the 8th to the 10th on the B. Just like that. Then slide that again, but hold it with some vibrato. It's all about the phrasing with these sorts of things. After we do that, then we play this nice little jazzy chord. Gary's not lessing up on these chords, is he? <laughs> anyway, this is 10th fret on the uh, A, 9th on the D, 10th on the G, and then borrowing your little finger here on the 12th on the B and high E. Alright, next section. Okay, so this next bit is a final section we'll look at in this video, and then the rest will follow in new videos. And there's a little bit of a kind of jazz fusion notes sprinkled into this uh, section. Let's start with this though. So that's up, down, 10th uh, on the B, 9th on the G, and then twice on the 8th uh, fret of the B. First one cut off, second one with vibrato. I just use upstrokes for that. This is what I call the jazz fusion bit next, so it goes. Okay. I reckon it sounds better like that than if I tried to go like a sweep, like a... I just don't think that sounds right. I, I like it more like a... Just picked individual notes. So we have 9th on the A, 8th on the D and G, and then 10th on the B. Right? And the next section will cut into two halves. The first one will sound like this. Okay, we'll get into that now. It's... 8th fret and the B slide to the 7th fret, I use an upstroke as well. And then down up, we have 9 on the G, uh, 7 on the B. Then we go down up, 9, 7 on the, uh, G, on the G, slide to 6. So, so far we have... And then finally we have 9 on the D and 6 on the uh, G, down up. The rest is just the scale descending completely. So we have now um, 9, 7, 5 on the D, down, up, down. Then up, down, up, the same notes, 9, 7, 5 on the A. And then down, up, down, the same on the E. And then slide the last one there. Okay, and then we go into this chord. Right, on the end. So, it's kind of an awkward chord again. And Gary plays this sort of thing perfectly and manages to pull out these chords. So what we're doing here, thumb, we end on that... Um, on the second fret there. And when we actually play this chord, you don't have to have the thumb still on, because um, when I listen to Gary play, it doesn't even ring out. Um, but then it's second finger on the second fret of the A, and then, sec sorry, first finger, second fret of the A, and then second finger on the third of, uh, of the uh, G, third finger on the third of the B, so we have, and then little finger stretching across to the fifth on the high E, okay? If you try it with your thumb down, you can still do that and have it have it ring out, but it doesn't necessarily have to ring out. But that's that chord. And he plays it like this. So you kind of have this note there to end, like a, you know. But it's played very quietly. It's really hard to hear it. Um, it's played very delicately. And that's basically that section. Okay, so one more time slowly. Right, 
Oh, there we go. I think we got through quite a lot in this video, and there's quite a lot still to come. Maybe two or three of the videos. Hoping just two, but let's go. See you next time.